Hi students, welcome to this tutorial on how to create your bibliography using Noodle tools. Once you've created your project and it's showing on your project list, you can click the one that you'd like to work on to open it. I'm going to use the Grand Trunk Railway as my example, and then click on bibliography in the top toolbar. Okay. To start creating your citations, choose the drop down arrow tab and you'll see a list of all the different types of information and formats of information that you could possibly think of. Um, this is a very extensive list. The most commonly used ones are used up near the top, and I'm going to start with a book. I'd like to show an example of a book, a website, and also a journal article today, and hopefully show you some shortcuts along the way. Then click Create Citation. On the next screen, it gives a really great slideshow on what a book is, how to evaluate it for whether or not it's a good source of information, and where to find the information that you're going to need to fill in all the required fields in Noodle Tools. Um, I'm going to just click Continue. And what you see on this page is a list of white boxes or fields that need to be filled in to complete your citation properly. First is the author's name. Sometimes books um, have an editor, however, or a translator or a compiler. Sometimes there's more than one author, and if that's the case, just click Add Another Contributor, or if there's three authors, add another one. Fill in their first name, last name, suffix if it is uh, listed on the book, otherwise leave it blank. Any field that has a red asterisk beside it is a required field, and you must fill this one in. If for some reason um, I do a typo, you will see a red wiggly line. This means that the history should have been capitalized. Okay. Um, you should look for the publisher and the publication city and the year as well as the edition if there is more than one uh, edition available. All of the information for these fields can be found just inside the front cover of the book on a blank white page before the index. However, there is also a shortcut that you could do as well. If you happen to know the ISBN number, which stands for International Standard Book Number, for the book, um, it can search the World Catalog for you. Now the ISBN number can usually be found in one of two places. It can be found on the same introductory page that has the publisher, the publisher and the publication city and the date, usually halfway down the page, or if it's a newer book, if you look on the back cover near the barcode, it is sometimes listed above the barcode. The ISBN is generally a 10 or a 13 digit number, if it's an older book published uh, before the 1960s, it will just have a standard book number and this little trick won't work. But if it does have a 10 or 13 digit international standard book number, uh, we could put it in here. The book that I'm looking at right now is called A History of the Canadian Pacific Railway and it's by Harold Adam Innes. The ISBN number for it, I'm going to enter in without any of the dashes. If there is a zero or an X, please put those in. So the ISBN number for this particular book is 08020170045. And then I'm going to search the World Catalog. Now there's no image cover available, but this is in, is in fact the book that I'm holding in my hands right now. And so I'm going to click on it to highlight it, and then click Import Selected Source. I'm going to quickly review to make sure that there are no spelling mistakes and then click continue and it will automatically import and fill in all of the required fields that I need for my citation. All I have to do is click submit and it will automatically format it in the MLA style that I picked earlier. There we go. Now when we're looking at websites there are no shortcuts and websites are often quite different from each other. Uh, this is an excellent slideshow on how to evaluate the websites. You can view that on your own time.
And the website that I was looking at earlier was the Library and Archives Canada page um, on the Grand Trunk Railway. And this is what it looks like right now. Generally, you can find the name of the website up in the left-hand corner. And most of the information about who has published the site, when it was last updated, can generally be found down near the bottom. Okay. This is a governmental website, so we know that we can trust it. It is an excellent source of information. However, if it is not .edu or .gc.ca or .gov up here, then you do need to look at um, whether or not this is a valid website. And oftentimes there will be an About Us link or a telephone number or an email address that you could check the author's credentials. So please be careful when you're looking at different websites. Let's go back to Noodle Tools and we'll start filling in as many of the fields as we possibly can. So the name of this website is Library and Archives Canada. It's important to make sure that everything is spelled correctly. The publisher of this site is Collections Canada. And that's actually not down at the bottom. It's right up here, which is unusual. Now, there are two dates that they ask for. The most recent date of access will automatically put in today's address. It'll date stamp it from your computer. So if you're working on a long-term project that you look at the site now in January and then again later in April, you should make sure that the most recent date of access is listed. And then the date of the publication. So not necessarily the date that the information was added initially or created, but the most recent date that it was modified. And this would be um, May the 2nd, 2005. Now sometimes it does not list an actual um, month and date, it just has the year. And if that's the case, just put in the year. Okay. And then we'd like to copy and paste the URL. So we'll simply copy that and paste it in. Now many websites uh, are composed of several different web pages. And if there is a different author or a different editor per web page, or you're using just one specific page of an entire website, you should fill in the website or the web page information from that website. Okay. When you filled in as many of the fields as you possibly can, click Submit. And again, Noodle Tools will automatically format your entry in MLA style. Finally, I'm going to show you how to um, cite a journal article. And I'm going to go to the Canadian Reference Center database and type in Grand Trunk Railway to see what kind of information we can find. Okay. This looks like an excellent article, so I'm going to click on it. Now, all of the information that we need to fill in Noodle Tools is listed right here in the abstract. Uh, it has the author, the source, the date that it was published, the number of pages, um, or Instead of filling in all the fields, what we could do is go over to the site link over on the right hand side of the page and scroll down until we find MLA style and we can copy and paste that citation directly into Noodle Tools. So let's click a journal article. So if you're being extra careful, you would type in the author's name, the article title, and all of the information, the pages that are listed, etc. Or you could go to copy and paste the citation. And paste it in right there. And click submit. Now, please read this here. You need to double check the spelling. Make sure that the appropriate capitalization is done and that the formatting is similar. Um, when you submit this, 
do make sure that the indentation is correct so that it's the same as everything else in your citation. Please look for those details before you print or submit this to your teacher. Okay. And that is an example of how to cite a book, a website, and a journal article. If you would like any further help as you're working on your projects, please feel free to ask Ms. Sutherland, the librarian. She'd be more than happy to help you.